Hello friends, in this lecture we will have a glimpse into how these equations and their subsequent functions help us in economic analysis. We will start with a very basic example. As we all know that the demand curve is a downward sloping curve and the supply curve is an upward sloping curve. As both of these functions are drawn in the real coordinate space, these functions should have a corresponding equation. Let's look at the equation that can help us plot the demand curve first. Let's assume that there is a vegetable vendor who sells apples across the street. On a regular basis, this vendor gets nearly 100 apples a day to sell it outside. The kind of demand that the apple seller has noticed by selling the apples for a little bit of time is somewhat like this. If the apple vendor sells the apples at the prices equal to zero, that is completely for free, then you will notice that all his apples would be sold. This is because at zero rupees, the demand for apples will be all the apples in the market, that is 100. However, if he increases the prices of apples from 0 to 1, suddenly he would notice that a few people in the society do not have 1 rupee in their hands. And that is why the demand for apple will fall from 100 to 90 apples. With a further increase in prices from rupee 1 to rupee 2, he would see a fall in demand from 90 to 80. This is because as the prices are increasing, fewer people in the society can afford apples at rupee 2. This will keep continuing. He has also noticed that at 3 rupees, he could sell up to 70 apples and rest 30 apples go unsold. Similarly, at rupee 4, he notices that 60 apples are demanded. At rupee 5, 50 apples, and so on. We need an equation to resemble such sort of demand in the market. As we know that when prices are zero, the quantity demanded is 100 quantities of apple. Hence, I will write quantity demanded is equal to 100 first. Then, I also know that for every 1 rupee increase, the quantity demanded falls by 10 units. So, I can add a minus 10 of P to this equation. This equation is written in the format quantity demanded is equal to A minus B of P. If you remember, we did a linear function which had an equation similar to this. A over here is 100 and B over here is 10. Now, if you notice, this equation correctly resembles the demand in the market. We can add values and check it. When prices are 0, we get quantity demanded 
is equal to 100. When prices are 1, we get quantity demanded equal to 100 minus 10 that actually gives us 90. At prices equal to 2, we get 100 minus 20 which equals 80 and so on. If you see on the graph, these are the same points that we had plotted earlier and this equation correctly resembles these points. When we join all these points, we end up getting a downward sloping demand curve. Similarly, we can plot a supply curve as well. The equation that corresponds to the supply curve is given as Qs is equal to 0 plus 10 of p. You can clearly see that when prices are zero, the quantity supplied is also zero. This makes sense because no producer would want to supply anything for free. As prices increases, for every one rupee increase in price, you can see that the quantity keeps on increasing by 10 units. If we plot all these points in the real coordinate space and join them, we will end up getting an upward sloping supply curve. We also know that it is the interaction between the demand and the supply curve which creates the market equilibrium. Hence, I want to know what are the prices and quantity at this point of equilibrium. You know that equilibrium exists when the demand curve intersects the supply curve or in other words when demand is equal to supply. Hence if we equate the two equations and solve for them we would end up getting our answers. Our demand equation is given as 100 minus 10 of p and our supply equation is given as 0 plus 10 of p. Taking minus 10 of p on the other side, we have 100 equals 20 of p. Therefore, we have p is equal to 5. If we insert p in any of the equations, then we would end up getting q is equal to 50. Hence, we can conclude that at the equilibrium, prices is equal to 5 and quantity is equal to 50. This means that as the apple vendor if you try to sell your commodities at rupees 5 and get only 50 quantities to sell on a particular day, then all your apple quantities will be sold and the market would clear off. This was just a glimpse of how you can use mathematical equations to solve for economic problems. As the course progresses, we would dive into a little bit of harder problems. That's it from this lecture. See you in the next one.